me Silvio Costa and I'm a social media marketing intern at Google Content. Thank you very much for tuning in to our podcast today. I'm joined here virtually, of course, by Elena Celokidi. Elena has been a member of ICF, which is the International Coaching Federation, since 2013 and has been a professional certified coach with ICF since 2017. Uh, she has more than 1,500 hours of experience in coaching sessions, and she won multiple awards for her coaching work in Russia. So, hi, Elena. Welcome to our podcast. Hi, Celia. I'm very pleased to be here. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Mm, would you like to tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself, about your work, uh, and what you're doing? <laughs> Interesting question. Um, I... The main thing that I want to share that I believe that teams could make more than individuals. And I think uh, working in teams is uh, maybe the second main skill uh, that people should have in our modern world. The first one is to be a leader inside, uh, to have responsibility for your own lives or something like that. And I think the second one is to be able to work with other people and to cooperate with other people. Mm, I see, I see. Yeah, I also believe that that's indeed a really, really important skill. And uh, probably now that's, uh, well, more evident than ever, now that we are kind of forced to be isolated and we really need to find new ways to to work together and, of course, to work together well as well. Mm, right. Mm, and uh, our topic for today is going to be team coaching. Uh, and uh, I heard and read a little bit about it, uh, mm -hmm. but I would like to understand better what it really means. So should we start there? Uh, can you please tell us a bit more about team coaching in general and what uh, what it is after all? Um, okay, <laughs> team co uh, Recently, International Coach Federation uh, published uh, ICF uh, team coaching competency model, so I could. Um, share their definition and then um, I can share my own definition that I communicate to my clients. So ICF, Team Coaching Competency Model, um, says that team coaching is partnering in a co-creative and uh, reflective process with the team and its dynamics and relationships in a way that inspires them to maximize um, their abilities and potential in order to reach their common purpose and shared goals. A little bit complicated for me, I, I suppose. <laughs> so uh, I always explain to my clients uh, that are from business that team coaching is a specific style of communication between specialist named coach and the team as a whole that helps them moving forward uh, to the goals that are important for them <laughs> and at the same time improve trust, initiative, communication, etc. And the team coaching is about, well, always is about leading position of the team in this process and partnering position of specialist. Um, because I think it's uh, differentiated from other modalities of helping teams to be effective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, it sounds, uh, it sounds very complicated in the beginning, <laughs> especially the, the ICF definition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, but then indeed your definition makes uh, makes everything more more concrete. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, so basically you mentioned also partnering, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, when uh, when you have a client for team coaching, uh -huh. are you becoming, uh, let's say, the leader of the team for a while, or are you more assisting? Uh, how would that work? How would that look like? Mm -hmm. I'm not the leader for the team for a while. I'm not the assistant. I'm like, um, I could say like um, equal partner or like, um, I can say like a mirror. I can, I become somebody who have uh, um, ability to notice um, some dynamics inside, inside the team and um, some kind of dysfunctions and reflect them uh, to put the attention to them hmm. in order to um, in order them to improve. So they ask me to help uh, them to maybe to be aware 
about something uh, they cannot notice by themselves, I could say. And I can help leader. So, and if I uh, sometimes stop the process of, um, I don't know, session or our meeting and say, do you notice something here? What does it mean for you? How could it help you to move forward that you are crying to each other, <laughs> shouting mm -hmm. to each other, for example? It doesn't mean that right. I become a leader. It doesn't mean that I become a leader. I, um, uh, because the leader is responsible for their results and for their behavior, maybe. No. I, I, I do my work as a, <laughs> in that moment, I do my work as a coach. And uh, they stop for a while, for example, during the session and say, oh, yes, thank you, because we, uh, we are not able to, um, to see our behavior from the side as it is our usual behavior. So th thank you for that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so basically helping them see all the things that they will normally miss because maybe they're so, uh, yeah, they're so into their own work and it becomes difficult to, yeah, to have that actually outside their perspective and be able to, yeah, see the bigger picture in that sense. Yes, but it not it means that I'm passive, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm also communicating with them according goal. My, um, my task is to help team uh, to improve in uh, maybe two directions at the same time to move forward to their goal mm -hmm. and at the same time to improve their, I can say, uh, soft skills, soft qualities. Mm -hmm. Because um, they earn coach to do something faster or to do something more or to be more, more effective. Uh, they earn no um they ask uh coach help to to improve something phys physical or uh, measurable for them mm -hmm. but <clears throat> i know that they are all adult and successful people so they could achieve it the reason that they couldn't <laughs> achieve it in, uh, till uh, this time mm -hmm. is in their soft um, soft skills, the ability right. to communicate, the ability to um, contact to each other, to resolve conflicts. But I can't say, I will come to you and help you to be, to, to have more trust. Mm, they say, right. and how it helps us to achieve our goals. So th that's mean that, okay, I say, okay, I will help you achieve, achieve our goals, but at the same time, I will um, help you in other, in other areas. Right, I see. Yeah, so it's basically in the end, it's through those areas and then other processes as well that they end up achieving basically the results that they were struggling to achieve beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Yeah, this sounds uh, like a really, really fascinating process. I, I can imagine it's, uh, it sounds really complex, but also a bit fun. Um, and I'm trying to think about how does team coaching differ from individual coaching? Uh, the main difference is, is in the client. You can imagine that the client is a team. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, yes, when uh, we um, use the term client in one-to-one -one coaching, we assume an individual in front of us. And uh, the client in the team coaching uh, is a team as a single identity. So I'm there not for each of them. I can't say, okay, I'm here for you, my dear guy, and for you, my dear woman. Uh, mm. No, I am there for their team, uh, but uh, I understand the team um, comprising of multiple individuals. So it's right. um, it's um, complicated a little bit, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, it means uh, that um, team coach and we coach not only people at one time there as a group. Uh, um, when we say team, it means that. Uh, they have connections between them and at the same time we coach connections between them mm -hmm. so that's why team coach should have knowledge and <laughs> feelings i could say of implicit and explicit dynamics and uh, ask uh, really powerful questions for for everybody in the room at the, mm. at the same time right right 
Yeah, it really sounds, uh, yeah, exactly, like a very, very complex process in that sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you're not, uh, yeah, I can imagine when you have um, just one client, then, yeah, it's that one-on-one -on -one relation, and then you can really focus on certain aspects. Certain yes, but if we, if we, uh, if you concentrate on uh, each person exactly in the room, we could, um, uh, we couldn't follow all of them, all these processes. Right. Um, it's really easier to feel by, by all our feelings. What is happening um, in the air in the room? What is wrong in their communication? What is wrong in their connections? And um, it helps rather more than um, to be concentrated on you or on another man or on, a, on another. Mm -hmm. Really, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. So, if I were to sum it up, it would be, uh, if I were to sum up this difference between individual coaching and in, and team coaching, then it would be that in team coaching we also look at all the interactions between people, so we don't focus on one individual. Yes, and uh, for example, during conflict situation, in one to uh, one coaching. We have a client in front of us, and he could imagine how would he behave um, during his future or current uh, conflict situation, but we are not exactly there during right. this communication. And in team coaching, we are there, and we have to have skills to resolve conflicts, for example. Or... Um, as we have more than one client uh, person in front of us, we should have um, some skills in facilitation, right. how, how to help them. So that's um, the main difference is in client. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand, I understand. Yeah, that, that sounds like a very, very fascinating topic. Mm. Mm, and now I'm trying to think about how can teams benefit from coaching because it sounds like you already mentioned um, mm -hmm. uh, th that if they have a certain goal maybe uh -huh. they're stuck with it maybe they can help with that and you also just mentioned now conflict management um, are there other things that can uh, the teams can benefit from team coaching uh, yes yes <laughs> i can say the main the main uh, benefit um like a bonus, not main, okay, like a bonus um, during team coaching, I know it's articulated, it is team building. Uh, it's building trust between team members. So in any way, between, uh, without, I'm sorry, without um, building trust, there is no um, moving to their goals. So generally team coaching aimed to help uh, teams make things faster, differently, or to be more effective. So the, these three main areas, if a um, team wants to achieve something special in that three areas, they can ask for team coaching. But special, uh, specifically, we help the team, as I said, in two directions, achieving goals and overcome maybe conflicts, build trust to each other, to articulate values, and then to act according values, to improve the algorithm of goal settings and decision making, or to develop learning on mistakes, to keep accountability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yes, that's why I could say that team coaching, while working on specific goal, we improve all aspects of good team functioning. So, I, I think it's a great benefit um, from team coaching. And by the way, when we leave the team, we should leave it uh, responsible for their future development, and we should leave them um, able to maintain working uh, using new skills. Mm -hmm. So we not only help them to improve something, but at the same time, we, uh, I could say, teach them how to communicate effectively. Right. Um, at, the, at the same time. So when we leave, we, we leave from them. We leave them um, able to um, able to live in new mood. I could say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so it sounds like basically you can help them generally. Uh, I could say with everything basically. So like with all the processes, 
that uh, that are associated with the theme. So what you said with the mm -hmm. uh, learning, with the values, and so on, or their functioning. And then on top of this, uh, what you m mentioned then last is you are also offering them some tools that they can use for future development. Yes, and it sounds like you are also in the sense maybe uh, empowering could, could be a good word to describe this, uh, and that basically you give them, you hand them the tools that they would need to stay successful and to maybe solve uh, some other problems that might come up in the in the future. Would this be an accurate summary? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so then it, it really sounds like a, like a very complex process and like, I feel like there's so many things to, to keep in mind for, for a coach. Uh, we talked about those um, connections like you need to look at the individual but then not only at the individual you need to look at all the connections and then now uh, we heard from you that there are so many areas that you can focus on mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm trying to think then what uh, what qualities should a good team coach have what does it take mm -hmm. to be able to be successful in this field mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what what are the main yes mm -hmm. uh, I think there are five main qualities not so many uh uh the first quality is to create space of trust around coach uh as i said in team coaching we want people to communicate maybe differently openly and honesty and it's very important uh, for coach to to be able to to build such atmosphere and maybe to be a role model of such kind of behavior uh and I think it's very important skill mm -hmm. uh, because it's uh, <laughs> uh, really stupid when um, sometimes coach go, uh, coaches go to teams and ask them to be honest, but at the same time, uh, he you know, doesn't share with them their observations or their, uh, what does he feel or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right, right. He, he's not honest why yeah, they should yeah. be. So yeah, exactly. uh, another another quality is um, um, to make a strong contract, because uh, there are always different opinions and expectations and even language if we have several pe people in the room. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is very important to be very clear about our mutual expectations and desired result. So it's very important because it's the in, in the middle. Um, we usually have situations when uh, people say, oh, we are not agree of going um, to this direction, for example. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> Let's see to our contracts. Mm, let's see to our rules. Mm -hmm. Why not? Uh, then another quality is um, keeping focus on the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, because we also, we have several people during discussion and we have usually deep conversations and dive dive in that conversations and it, it is very important to help them to go back to actions and decisions at the end of the session and it's uh, more difficult than um, to have only one individual in front of you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because uh, several people really want to to go deeper and deeper in there uh, discussions here, yeah, really. Right. So, okay, so it's very important for us to help them to keep focus on the goal. So, how this, um, as I said before, how this um, communication, how this discussion helps you to move forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can say, no, how? <laughs> so, right. okay, okay. Uh, then uh, the fourth is um, quality. Uh, to feel and observe um, dynamics in the room. Uh, it is always dynamic between people and um, they have some rules of um, development and uh, they have uh, some reasons for these dynamics. Uh, and they, um, some of them are positive and some are negative for team development. So our um, responsibility uh, is to notice them 
right. and uh, the last <laughs> so the last skill is to give feedback on what is observed mm -hmm. so okay it's very great that you feel and observe dynamics uh, don't keep them inside you please right. say say people this is your work to to say what do you see so i, I uh, always say that our main task is to make uh things that are implicit to make them explicit mm -hmm. for the team mm -hmm. so right, i think right. um, this is the main qualities mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i see yeah yeah and, and i could recognize i feel like some of them also really build nicely on top of each other for example the feedback part with creating trust so what you just said okay you should also share and like by having the ability to to provide feedback and by actually providing that feedback you you basically inspire trust in your team and you can lead by example and hmm. yes but it's not only feedback okay i can see this what did that, what does it mean for you great great it could um, mean everything but uh, we um, as coaches we link this observation we link our intuition with achieving the goal mm. so what does it mean for you according achieving your goal right so right. it's it gives another focus of discussion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right okay okay so so it so really then ties uh, ties back into the third quality which is staying goal focused <laughs> yes i see i see yeah that is such a such a fascinating process i think um and uh, and I can imagine it's not that uh, it's not that easy. So th does it take uh, does it take a lot of time to develop these uh, these qualities, these skills for for a coach? Yes, I I think yes. Um, for example, um, I have a program, basic program for team coaches. It consists of three modules, and um, du during half a year. And I have uh, like a continuing education program for coaches, which named practice and team coaching world practice uh, that also can, um, takes half a year as minimum. So, but it doesn't mean that every uh, person could become a great team coach. Oh, right, right. Um, it, do it doesn't mean. I think um, it depends on uh, uh, inner, um, inner abilities, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Right. So, so then it should be. So basically, a lot of training is involved, but it should also be for the right person that is predisposed to uh, to use. Or to I think practice. I I think practice is very important here, because we can uh, we could um, talk a lot of uh, how should I behave, what could I see in the team. But there are a lot of different situations, and it's very important for, um, I believe, really, it's very important for coach to live through that situations, to find decisions by himself, mm -hmm. for example, and only only then you could decide if it if it is your field or not. Right. For example. I see. I see. Yeah, okay, so, so then it really, yeah, if someone would decide to go into this field, they really should have a, a very good look at themselves and kind of see uh, what their, yeah, what their inclination is also. Mm. I see. Right. Mm, so, so now we basically discussed a bit about uh, what what should be there from a coach's side. And now I'm going to shift a bit towards the team side. And I'm wondering what commitment or investment is expected from a team if they ask the help from a, from a coach uh-huh okay from, from from my experience the main commitment is to attend sessions at least mm. so <laughs> because the, yeah really because because the client is the whole team we need to have all members there mm. uh, and uh, we need to have them in appropriate state of mind right uh, and involvement so uh, it's the main commitment uh, then another uh, is to apply decisions into practice and it is not easy before before because they have a daily routine and daily work uh, then another commitment is to have um, open discussions during coaching sessions mm. 
because usually we uh, discuss some pleasant things for them, uh, things that they avoided to discuss. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are not so effective, right. by the way. For example, they, uh, they have um, some expectations from their leader and the leader have uh, um, some kind of expectations from their teams and they mm, didn't communicate that expectations to each other and um, uh, they keep them and they have negative energy inside mm -hmm. so they don't communicate effectively and during coaching session we mm, coordinate i could say to help um, uh, to help to have that uh, conversation and it's, in the beginning it is unpleasant conversation for them but at the end uh they usually understand oh it is so easy to talk as people right uh yes and uh, each we can hear each other and we can respond to each other <laughs> wow <laughs> so so the uh, it, it is an important commitment yes to to um, to participate in open discussion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, my commitment is to organize process uh that it is the most comfortable for everyone. Mm, I see. Um, yes, and um, and I think um, the last main commission commitment is to make decisions and to take initiatives of the conversation by themselves. Mm -hmm. Because usually, very often, I can say usually, but very often, uh, team starts. Mm, their mm, coaching contract from the position okay you come so please uh, say us what to do and uh, teach us and we will just be relaxed and um, we'll see what what will happen mm -hmm, I see. So, so it's very important <laughs> commitment to have um, responsibility for their own development right right okay so, so not only be passive and kind of uh, wait for the coach to uh, to fix your problems in that sense but actually take initiative what you just said and, and really be involved in the process uh, yes not not only to wait to uh, coach to fix problem but to resolve for problem also mm -hmm. <laughs> because they usually wait for resolving <laughs> i see i see mm. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, and, and I could hear in, in what you said that um, I, I feel like this theme comes up again of, of trust. So like the, that's maybe one part that they need to work on as, as well to, to trust uh, the process, to trust the coach and the environment. Uh, and it sounds like mm -hmm. this is where the, the coach and the team come together is that the coach needs to provide the environment. And I think to trust for positive intentions of uh, each team member. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's also very important in trust. Right. Mm -hmm. And after that, people could communicate, people could clarify something if they, if they really trust that intention is positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they believe that intention is negative, they don't want to communicate. Right, right, yeah, exactly, and then they're closed, and then the whole process basically fails. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yes. Do you encounter this often, that uh, the clients that you work with uh, assume that their colleagues have bad intentions? Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, it happens uh, when we have um, hidden conflicts in the team. Uh, during initial interviews, I hear, I can hear uh, that people uh, say about other members of the team that they have um, uh, intention to destroy the teamwork or to, um, to hurt somebody or something like that. Yes, mm -hmm. really, initially it happens. I see, I see. And, and I'm wondering, um, yeah, because I can hear that, that there are these common themes that, that come up, communication, uh, trust, also what you said now with these 
assumptions and, and hidden conflicts mm -hmm. and, yeah and all these themes and i'm wondering are there some more common themes that you that you find in your work that you come across uh, on a regular basis decision making and goal setting mm -hmm. uh yes uh the com uh, common topic also that they have a lot of discussion Maybe they have not only one, but three or five meetings before they uh, make a decision. Mm -hmm. And my task there is to show people, to show the team that during even two hours, they can discuss uh, problem <laughs> and they can make a decision what to, to do next. Mm -hmm. So and it's very helpful for them, and they usually say, "Oh, thank you." Now we can. Now we know that we can make decisions. Here. <laughs> you can say yes. <laughs> Why not? And it's um, um, according to their feedback, it's very helpful for them to have such experience inside them to live through such experience, because in their um, common life, they also um, bring uh, these skills mm -hmm. and tools. And they make decisions there, not only during our coaching sessions. And uh, about goal settings, uh, I hear you know, that I, during my work, yes, that uh, they, I try to remember several cases. Uh, for example, they can discuss, discuss things and bring ideas, but the leader said, no, it will be this way. Our goal is that goal. And on the other hand, this leader uh, asked me to help make his team more initiative, more creative. And the team members say, me, say to me, we, we don't want to be creative because it doesn't matter what um, do we um, offer because our leader said, no, it will be such way. So, so right, right. it's very important to help them to maybe improve decision making and goal setting processes. Mm -hmm. I understand. Right, right. Yeah, and it also sounds like a very uh, basic learning process uh, in this sense because the leader in that case th that you just presented, the leader was actually teaching his uh, uh, his team members to not be creative. So he was actually yes. encouraging them all this time to not be creative, but probably he wasn't aware of it. Hmm. And by the way, uh, very often the driver of dysfunctioning is a fear. Mm -hmm. uh, leader um, afraid of something. Mm -hmm. And that's why he behaves such um, such way. Or some of team members afraid of something, mm -hmm. feel fear of something, and he behaves such way to prevent maybe his his fear or maybe to prevent some um, behavior that um, is in his imagination right right i see uh, and and in that case my work is to create really space when they can um, express their fears if they want yes mm -hmm. and clarify it and oh, ex again and again to make clear understanding clear Clear, clear room for discussion. Right, right. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so then, yeah, a team should basically uh, focus on on all these aspects. So try to look at the communication, look at the trust, the decision making process, at at these hidden fears, and of course, a coach can help them with all these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. May I, may I add? Mm -hmm. But. Uh... For, for me, I think it's important to notice that um, if John and Mary, for example, have a conflict between them, it is their personal deal. But if the conflict between them uh, influences the teamwork, it's a case for team coaching um, interaction, for, for example. Right. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes I meet situations when a leader um, is not happy with a conflict between 
or relationships between several team members. But it's their personal deal. <laughs> It doesn't influence uh, the teamwork, or maybe it makes uh, teamwork even better if they compete in something. Mm -hmm. May, uh, maybe they compete in ideas, creative ideas. Why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to link our um, team coaching intervention, interventions with the goal and uh, what's uh, what is important for team, not exactly for persons in the team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah, that's a very that's a very interesting point. Yeah, in that, uh, yeah, people should always kind of refer back to their goals and see, okay, is this really in the way, or how does this contribute? You know, although we may have a, a personal hunch about it, so what you just said, the leader maybe feels like ah, I don't really like that, but then, yeah, wait, look at it. Is it? Oh, really yes, or, uh, uh, or there is situation. Um, there are situations that. Uh, in a team, in team, there is a member who always asks uncomfortable questions, <laughs> <laughs> unpleasant questions, or something like that. Right. And usually, team members doesn't like him. Hmm. Uh, we want to celebrate something, and uh, this person is always um, asking us uncomfortable questions. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, but from the system perspective, we could say thank you to this person because. He uh, tries our systems um, to be stable. Mm -hmm. He offers us areas to uh, for improvement, and uh, that's why we could see them and improve, and uh, we can still have our team as a system stable. Mm -hmm. So it it's also important uh, area for team coaching to to see uh, positive things in each in each behavior, I could say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good point. And uh, this kind of gets me to, to think about about misconceptions, because what you just uh, what you just explained sounds like could be mm -hmm. categorized as a misconception in, in the sense that, you know, team members may think, oh, this person is always uh, bringing things up, maybe maybe he should stop doing that. You know, this actually makes us uncomfortable. But maybe that's actually a good thing, and it's a misconception that that person should stop doing that because maybe that person that brings stuff up is actually helping the team. And I'm wondering, uh, are there some common misconceptions that that you encounter in your work? I remember that one uh, one that you mentioned already was um, team uh, teams that might expect you to solve their problems. <laughs> yes, and uh, I have uh, another mis <laughs> misconceptions. Uh, for example, that team coach will only facilitate sessions as facilitator, um, according their request from the leader, for example, mm -hmm. or that team coach will only give advices, so they um, they could bring their problems and issues to the session, and they, they are waiting that the team coach will advise them what to do or um, that um, they could expect that team coach will provide training and will teach really them <laughs> how to gi give feedback to each other or something like that and explain some theoretical part for example mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also that team coaching is only team uh, like team building mm -hmm when people uh, could uh, only um, improve their communication between between each other right right hmm. yeah that sounds like uh, like it's quite a <laughs> quite a significant list uh, mm -hmm. so i'm really i'm really happy that you mentioned all these because i can imagine that this can be really helpful for someone listening and that they're trying to figure out okay what, what can i expect from from team coaching uh e hmm. Yes, and, um, and and it is also about contracting at the very beginning. Mm. Yes, to collaborate our expectations. Mm -hmm. Right, right. With yeah. the team. Yeah, I remember what what you said um, in the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. What makes a good coach that a good coach should be should make things clear, have a clear contract. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. 
And oh, okay, so so we heard a lot about uh, what does a team need to bring, what should mm -hmm. the coach bring to the table, um, what makes this whole process of team coaching successful. Uh, but now I'm also wondering, are there certain teams or certain industries, certain types of teams, I mean, or certain industries that could benefit more from the help of a coach than others? So I'm I'm wondering. Um, is a, a team of IT people more likely to uh, to benefit from the help of a coach than an HR team, for example, or how how does this work? I I can't uh, easy answer to your question. <laughs> for me, only teams who are ready to take to understand or to take to you can say any word here, uh, responsibility for their development uh, could benefit from team coaching. In uh, other cases, um, they will be regret of the, with experience <laughs> before the, the expectation. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't depend, uh, um, are you from IT or are you from product, sales um, department? It doesn't mean. Uh, and uh, here I could say that sometimes customers have a dilemma to uh, to invite coach that um, has uh, the, um, the experience in their industry. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Or who has no such experience. Uh, from... From my working experience, uh, I can say that it is very it is very important for coach to have uh, knowledge of uh, how specific um, industry or specific direction is organized. It is very important to understand the um, links uh, between people between uh, um, organizations or something like that but more important and we can have this information from the interviews from google from everywhere uh, uh, and it is very important for coach to know the history uh, of this team or organization it is really important because for example in one case I was invited to improve communication in a top team of international company. Mm. Right. And it was, everything was great. And I start in my initial interviews and only one person said, said me that, do you know that you are the third person with the same uh, request for, from us? I said, really? Yes. <laughs> Every four or five years we, uh, ask um, a coach with such request, and it was critical important for me to know that uh, because we build our contract uh, not uh, on improving communications right now in this team, but how to make this table. What legacy do this team of directors directors want to um, leave after them? Yeah, and it it was mm, more powerful mm, focus for their work. Uh, so that's why it's very important to know the history, and it is very important for coach to know mm, their competencies, to know yeah. teamwork, how team, mm, how effective teams work, how non-effective teams work, what are dynamics, what are rules of their um, maturity or something like that. So, and it doesn't depend on IT teams or HR teams because it's always people. I understand, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think this uh, this example that you gave with a, with a director that was like, oh, hey, actually, you're the third one that uh, that came here. I think that's uh, that's a really good and powerful example mm, to kind of show, okay, it's not really 
about the industry in itself. That's something that the coach can can learn uh, as they go and can learn before. But what's really the most important, or at least it sounds like it, um, is to make sure that you learn things, the crucial things about the company when you enter in that contract with them, basically. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah, I feel like that's a very valuable thing, and I can imagine that it helps people. Let's see if they had a, a misconception, because we also talk about those. Uh, if they have a misconception that only certain teams can benefit from team coaching, now, no, hopefully they have this more clear that no, actually every team can benefit from, uh, yeah, from proper team coaching. Hmm. Right. Mm, and uh, mm. I, I remember that uh, you mentioned a team coaching uh, program uh, and I would like to, to, to go back to that one because I, uh, I was curious if you can tell us a bit mm -hmm. uh, more about it. I remember that you told us that uh, it takes six, uh, no, half a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I have, a, I can say it's unique program. There, there is no such in the world yet, as I know. <laughs> uh, this is a program for already team coaches who got already initial training on team coaching somewhere. Uh, and we give them a real team there for six months. So they have a real contract with a real team. Mm. It's not a play. <laughs> and uh, yes, and uh, we provide mentoring for them there and supervision support. So mentoring, uh, before sessions, then they have session, then they have supervision after that. Uh, and also they have individual support if they need during these six months, according to their contract. And also they have webinars to prepare for sessions and uh, some kind of theoretical part, articles, recordings from speakers and something like that. So um, this program um, is about practice and maturity of team coaches mm. because because as i as i said before i think practice is and reflection is um, the main um, thing mm -hmm. for team coaching development right so right. so that's why that's why there are reflection practice there and living through real team coaching process from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. I understand, right. So this is basically, so you mentioned in the beginning, there should be already coaches with an accreditation, and then this program can really help them uh, hone their skills and really, yeah, get them. Yeah. Not exactly with accreditation, you can, um, you can see. Uh, the main thing that um, at the very beginning, you, can under you should understand what does it mean in coaching, um, tools to um, to work with teams and um, not exactly you should be accredited as uh, somewhere as a team coach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I understand. Yes, and uh, this program provides CC um, Continue Coaching Education Union by ICF also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. And then you you could use this these points later, uh, basically. No, what kind of points? Oh, oh you, you mentioned CC, you said? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, no. Coaches could use that um, CC use <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to um, renew their ACC, PC, or MCC credentialing in ICF, International Coach Federation. Yes, this now for now, this program provides 54 CC use and uh, to continue their credentialing they need only 40. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, nice. Uh, that sounds like a really, really great addition. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Mm -hmm. okay. So, but, uh, but the main point here is uh, that groups are very small, only six people in the group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we provide individual support, it means that sure. We couldn't provide it appropriately for more right, number of right. people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so then if uh, if people want to sign up, they should really really be quick then. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, and they uh, have to wait half a year because uh, we take only two groups of six people twice a year. Mm -hmm. all that's, right. that's all. <laughs> I see, I see. Mm -hmm. Because I really believe that my uh, students are brilliant. <laughs> And uh, yes, and they bring my soul to into them. Mm -hmm. I see. That, that's really beautiful. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, it's been such a such a full discussion. I feel like I, I feel like I learned a lot about uh, about team coaching. Mm. And uh, I would like to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you very much mm -hmm. for talking to us. It's been really really insightful. And uh, yeah, where can where can people find more about your program and more about you if they want to get uh, in touch with you? Mm -hmm. I think the easiest way for them is to type my name in Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram as Elena Chelokidi and they will find me there because not so many Elena Chelokidis there. <laughs> I see, I see. Perfect. Okay, right. So it, and it was a um, uh, real pleasure for me to talk to you today. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Thank you, too. It was a pleasure for us as well. Thank you so much for talking to us. So, well, thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll catch you in the next podcast. Have a nice one. Hey, Sylvie here. Thanks again for tuning in. If you want to listen to more podcasts like these, then don't forget to follow us on our social media, on Facebook at Cool Content Coach and LinkedIn at Cool Content AB. We have a lot of articles there with tips and tricks that will help you make the most out of these dynamic times. Lastly, check our website, gulcontent.com. There you can find a lot of coaching programs, which you can join to get in contact with some of Sweden's finest coaches. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope to catch you in our next podcast. Bye for now.